We started with the golden, well, the golden interval, right? This guy over here. We used it to create, if you make a square out of this and a rectangle out of this, you get the golden rectangle. If you nest within themselves a whole bunch of golden rectangles, right, and get smaller and smaller and smaller, you get that spiral. And today we're looking at the angle. Here's how we're going to do it. I want you to imagine this is like a piece of string, okay? So you could pick this piece of string up, you could hold it in your hands, okay? Now, if we were to take this piece of string and take the two ends and have them meet together so that this end and this end connected and formed a circle, okay? So we're going to go from this down to something a bit like this. You see what I'm getting here? Okay, so you can draw a rough one on your page there. Okay. This idea here that A over B, what's it equal to? What ratio is it equal to to make it the golden ratio? Who remembers? It's another fraction. A plus B over A. Very good. A plus B, the whole thing, right? Over A, the longer, small section. Okay. So in here, what have I got? I have B around here, A, so far, so good, but now I want to make an angle out of it. So, put a point at the center of this circle we've just made. Put a point right there at the center. Okay. Now, the angle which, and the fancy word is um, subtended, the angle which is subtended here at the center by this arc over here, B, this is the golden angle in there. Okay. That's the golden angle. So the question is, like we know, we know what this is. Uh, this is phi. What is it in third form? Who remembers the fraction? One plus, One plus five root five, five on two, and we've got a rough decimal approximation of one point six. Very good. I'll put a couple of extra decimal points in there. Okay. Now, here I'm going to let you play for maybe three, four minutes. Okay. This is all you need to know. Actually, it's quite a few things, right? If this is what you know this is, and I've made this out of this ratio, can you find the size of this angle in here in degrees? Can you work it out? You've got all the pieces. Have a go. Now, I could do a number of things at this point, right? I could just give you the number. That would be kind of the equivalent of what Ryan has done. It's like, ta-da, I have it. But that doesn't yield any insight, right? And it's also like, well, why is that true? Secondly, I could just walk you through a solution, okay, which I will in a second, but before I do that, there's a really important thing you need to do, right? The person doing the work is the person doing the learning. Does that make sense? That makes sense, doesn't it? If you're the one working through it, and this is why I gave you some time, you're the one who's actually going to gain some insight or struggle with the hard part of the problem and actually learn something new, okay? So what am I going to be doing? How did I do this? Like, I didn't have this told to me. I just knew the pieces and I worked it out. What have I done that you haven't done? Okay. Now, when it comes to problem solving in general, and this is kind of like a problem solving type of question, right? I think there are always two aspects to every problem solving question, which you can sort of file away in your general purpose tools drawer, right? Challenge number one is you have a lot of information. You have a lot of information. And often what you have to do is sift out what's important. Right? There are things in the question that are distracting you from what you really need. Okay? Now I have loads of things up here. Okay? I'm going to be bold and suggest all I really need at least to get started is these two. Okay? Now that's, I said, just one of the parts of the problem. The other part, like apart from getting rid of what's not there, is you have to see what is there but isn't obvious. Right? So what have I done? I've put on... Um, because I'm after an angle, golden angle. I've put some labels on these angles. I have X as the actual angle that I want, and I've got Y as that reflex angle around the outside. Okay. Now, it's a circle. I don't know very much about X and Y, but I do know, because it's a circle, that if I put them together, I ought to get 360 degrees. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Now, not only do I see that, but because these go all the way around, and these two go all the way around, right? These ratios should be the same, right? The ratio of this length to this length should be the same as the ratio from this angle 
to this angle. Do you agree with that? Okay. Angles, lengths, they make up the same thing. Okay. So therefore, let's move into our actual proof here. Okay. What I've got is x over the uh, other way around. <coughs> y over x equals five. You okay with that? Because right. I'm going long to short. Long to short. Happy? Okay, now I'm going to put this thing together. I want to solve this. I want to solve it. I'm solving for x. So you can see what I've got now is one equation, two equations. Don't forget, fine's a letter, but it really just stands for a number, right? So I can work with it just fine. When you've got two equations and two numbers, you can solve this. You've done simultaneous equations to death, right? So we can do this. I'm going to do some kind of substitution. Right? You know how the other way is like elimination, but that tends to be when you have like an x plus y and an x minus y. And then you can eliminate. Here it doesn't fit so neatly. So I'm going to take this equation up here. I want to get rid of the y's. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Out of this line, I can conclude this. Do you agree? Nothing too dramatic there. Okay. But now that I know this, I can pop it directly in here. 360 minus x on x right equals 5 now I've gone from having two equations and two unknowns now I have one equation one unknown well, does that make that, sense where did the y go? okay I've said that y is equal to this from equation 1 and I've just done a slight rearrangement so I can substitute it out here you happy with that okay now that's kind of the critical step really right what else can I do with this uh, let's see here I guess I would do this um, 360 on x uh, minus 1 equals 5. Are you okay with that? I broke apart that fraction. That's a similar thing I did when I worked out the golden ratio in the first place. Um, 360 on x is 5 plus 1. I actually want x, don't I? So I want x on 360. That's the reciprocal. So this will be the corresponding reciprocal. And now I just need this guy. That's degrees, by the way. Are you happy with that? It wasn't all that dramatic, was it, really? I've only used tools that you have at your disposal. What did I do that you didn't do? It really all started at the beginning. It's a bit like setting off some dominoes, right? If you have, if you can work out what's the important information, and what's there, but is only implied and not, you know, sitting on the surface for you to see, it just sort of leaps out at you. Okay, now, you know what uh, pi is, so, uh, let's see here, okay, one, well, I think I've got, Okay, have you caught up? You there? So, what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to give you a whole bunch of decimal places, and then I'm going to round them off a little bit. Okay, what I'm getting, as far as my calculator can tell me, is 137.507764, dot, dot, dot. Okay, you can kind of see why I've chosen to go to the nearest one decimal place. That zero there is pretty close to just being zero for the whole thing. So I'm going to call it 137.5, okay? Approximately one decimal place. This is the golden angle.